Well, it's uh, been a while, huh? Well, uh, welcome back to another episode of Dungeon Dives. Let's just jump right into it and talk about some quests. We'll start with the Alliance since they only have one quest, which is located in Stormwind Cathedral. This one quest is given to you by Archbishop Benedictus, and it's called Bring the Light, and it's pretty simple, you just have to kill the last boss. The Horde version of this quest is called Bring the End, and it's picked up by Andrew Brunel in the Undercity. The Horde also have a quest called Unholy Alliance, but can only be started by killing the last boss of Razorfen Kroll and looting the small scroll, which starts the quest to send you over to Varimathris, who will then give you the Unholy Alliance quest to kill a boss outside of the instance. The next quest is neutral to both factions and is located outside of the instance. Up on this hill, you can accept the quest A Host of Evil, which is a quest that requires you to kill trash mobs inside the instance. Horde players will also want to search for Ambassador Macklin outside of the instance because you will need his head for the Unholy Alliance quest. You might be searching for a while because he does have multiple spawn points. Walk through the giant boar skull and you'll enter the spooky caverns of Razorfen Downs. The recommended level for this dungeon is 36 to 38 and it's really nice to bring a class that can cure diseases because this place has a lot of them. So priests, paladins, shamans, they're all a really good addition. There's also lots of undead, so priests with their shackle undead ability will be very useful if you start getting overwhelmed. Lastly, there are lots of large groups of mobs in this dungeon, so classes like mages and warlocks are super useful with their AoE abilities. I should also mention that this place has really, really good loot for some classes. Since this is in the level 40 range, classes like shamans, hunters, warriors, and paladins are going to be graduating to a higher armor tier at level 40. So some of these pieces are going to be super helpful and be some of your first armor upgrades into this new armor type. So here we are in RFD. Go down the left hallway and start killing some boars. The geomancers are going to be your top priority since they are casters that can do high amounts of damage. Try and line of sight them behind corners because they do try and run away at low health and you don't want them pulling groups because this part of the dungeon is really tightly packed at the beginning. When you get to the oven room, clear out any mobs you might see because we'll be returning to this place later. Keep moving forward and you'll find the gong room. Now clear out all the mobs and don't press the gong until your party is ready. This will summon a wave of ads and if your party isn't ready, well, uh, that might lead to a bad time. Hmm, okay guys, well this guide says that we all need to be ready before we press the gong. And since Fred is AFK, I think we should wait until- Oh! Wait, stop! What are you doing?! Stop! No, we're not ready yet! Stop! Stop pressing! Stop pressing the- Stop pressing the thing! Stop it! Oh jeez. Oh man. No, 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 wait, 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 hold on guys, hold on guys, wait, wait! <laughs> first wave of ads is 10 little non-elite spiders. The next wave is 4 elite spiders. And the final wave is the boss herself, Tutankash. This boss is really easy. She has abilities, but they don't really do much. And she drops a plate chest piece, a cloth cape, and some leather gloves. Continue forward and head straight to stumble upon the next brutal boss. While this silent metal party seems a bit overwhelming, it's actually pretty easy. When you pull the little skeletons, the boss will pull as well, so just focus down the adds first, preferably with AoE, and then kill the boss. Mordesh casts a fire nova and fireballs, and he drops a cloth waist, a necklace, and an offhand item. Turn around and go across the bridge. You'll find the next quest from the mage Balistras. He gives you a quest to talk to him again, which gives you another quest to start an escort, but make sure your whole party is on the escort quest or else they won't get credit. This is super important, so just make sure everybody in your party is on the same part before starting the escort. What's strange about this is, despite being held prisoner, Baonestraz seems pretty chill about the whole thing. What can I do for you? The escort will involve backtracking all the way back to the oven room, where he'll use some magic stuff and waves of ads will spawn. Now this section lasts five minutes and it's not too difficult. The only hard part is that Balistraz has a really low health pool, so make sure the mobs aren't wailing on him during the event. 
The final wave is Plague Maw the Rotting, who has a nasty disease, and drops leather gloves, and a mage exclusive wand. Once the quest has been completed, walk back to the entrance of the instance and go right this time. Now we'll be doing the undead section. This section of the instance mainly consists of big pulls of adds. You should focus on killing the frozen souls first because they do have a nasty silence spell. This next part is a spiraling walkway up to the end of the dungeon and you'll want to keep your head on a swivel for the next boss. Glutton is our next boss and his radiating green disease cloud isn't just for show. Make sure your range keep a distance because yes, that gross green gas does do damage. The main thing you want to look out for for this boss is he enrages when he gets at low health and he drops a one-handed axe and some leather shoulders. With the wandering boss down, we can now pull peacefully without fear of being murdered and slowly progress up this babam battlefield from hell. That's a Mario reference, by the way. When you get higher up, you'll run into the skeletal summoners who will summon additional adds, so they should be your top priority. Splinterbone Captains are basically Splinterbone Centurions, except they're a lot bigger and meaner, so focus them down next. On your journey upwards, you might run into Raggle Snout, who is a rare boss. He has a bunch of abilities, but the most important one is his mind control. Either have someone available to dispel it, or have somebody be ready if the tank or the healer gets mind controlled. Raggle Snout drops a shield, a male waist, and the sword called Excalibur? <laughs> Keep traveling upward to face the final boss, Aminar. You'll never leave this place alive. The most important ability your tank needs to be aware of is Aminar's Wrath, which will knock your tank back. And a knockback plus a giant mountain means that your tank isn't going to have a good time if they're positioned poorly. <laughs> That is why their back needs to face the tent so he doesn't go flying. The next important ability is the Frost Spectres he summons. Have a DPS prioritize these adds and be an off tank of sorts so they don't start beating up on your healer. Lastly, Aminar cast Frost Nova that your healer should dispel on the off tank so they're not rooted and unable to grab those additional adds. Aminar drops leather gloves, a male chest piece, cloth robes, and a plate helm. And that's Razorfin down, so congratulations on stopping the undead threat and enjoy all that loot on your adventure through Azeroth. Hey, can I be in the big Hi there, thank you for watching my video, and a huge thank you to Dawkin for letting me use some of his stream footage in this video. Go check out his stream if you really like warrior gameplay, he's a really good warrior. So uh, yeah, go check it out. Also, if you really like that intro, you can check the link in the description to see a side-by-side -side comparison of it with the real one. And you can acknowledge my lovely, lovely patrons. We got a whole bunch of them since the last video, so let's go over them. We got Bodhi, that's Dio, Mixpazitron, Milwaukee, Jude, Douglas Bagula, I, I think I'm saying that right, sorry if I'm not, Caleb Viglin, Vintage Me, Nagging Balls, Happy Tron, Ian McNeil, Half Finnis, Alliance Sucks, For the Horde, Guruku Blue Moon, Master Haran, Fishy Lawn Gnome, Andre Burghetto, and all these other patrons too, hey, 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 hey! Thank you guys so much. This series had a really long pause, but now that the game's out, the hype's kind of died down a little bit. I think uh, I'm going to be making more episodes of these in the future, so let me know what uh, dungeons you want to see next. And let me know what intros you want parodied next too, because that's actually one of the hardest parts of this series. Um, so yeah, I'll see you, see you, guys, see you guys later, bye bye!